Hello, in this tutorial I want to show how I created this terrain mesh blending effect since the response on my Twitter post was way more than I expected. We will recreate this effect in Godot 3.3 but the same workflow also applies to Godot version 4 as you can see in the background. And as a little disclaimer, the effect works at best on flat terrain since I didn't find a procedural solution for complex environments like caves or mountains. So let's get started. So in this scene we have three different rocks and to explain things the rock on the right has snow blending, the rock in the middle here has a blending depending on the UV map on the, of the rock and the left rock has a triplanar blending. And to make it a bit more visible I make it unshaded and if we take a closer look at the rock on the right, we see we have very hard edges at the end of the rock and to fix this, we blend the sand texture with the rock, as you can see here. But also here the illusion breaks off. If you look closely, you can also notice the seam. And to fix this, I found a solution that you can use a triplanar map so that the texture coordinates are not depending on the UV map but on the global position in the world environment. And if I move the rock a little bit, you can see that the texture is always um, is staying the same um, depending on the position. In the editor, I build up a little scene with an environment node and a light node. And there I add a new mesh instance and under mesh I add a new plane mesh and I will scale the plane up to 40 by 40 and to create our triplanar material we create a new material and it's a shader and under shader we will create a new shader and the triplanar shader isn't supported by Guru 3 natively so we will shortly go to Guru 4 there we will select any object and we will create a new standard material and for demonstration I will load in a sample texture in the albedo channel which will be a brick texture. And what you can see now is the brick texture depending on the UV map but we want to have it triplanar so we go to the UV tab and enable it. And now we have a triplanar map which is in local space but we want our triplanar map to be in global space so we will enable word triplanar on the top there which is missing in the Godot version 3 and that's why we're in Godot version 4. And if I move the cube now you can see that the texture is depending on the world coordinates. And also if I for instance rotate the cube the pattern of the texture um, stays the same. And to get the shader we select our shader uh, standard material and convert it to a shader material. And there we have our whole shader and we will copy it and paste it in our Godot version 3. And there we need to change a few things like in the albedo and the metallic sampler 2D variables and there we have it and now I go to the shader parameters and set the albedo to white set the roughness to 1 the metallic texture channel to 1 on the X component I set the UV blend sharpness to 1 this is important and I set the UV scale to 1 for the UV 1 and 2 and for albedo texture I will load in a uh, grass texture. And as you can see now we have the same effect as in Godot 4 um, since we ported the shader to Godot 3. I will also put the shader code in the description along with the project file if you are interested to take a look at it yourself. And right now I scale the uh, um, UV a little bit down so that we don't have too much tiling in the grass texture. Now we will load our mesh in our scene 
I decided to use the store frame which I made for Sandfire and I move it a little bit back so we can see it a little bit better and under material we will create a new shader material and there we will create a new shader and firstly we define the shader type as spatial since we are in 3D space and then we will create our first variable from type vector3 and I name it n since this is the normal vector of the xz level or plane and this will be important for our distance calculation for the blending later on. Then we create three new variables from type float. The first one is the triplanar scale and I will set it to 0 0.05 and this value should be the same as in your grass shader in the UV scale. And the next variable is the blend size. I set it to 1 and the blend offset um, is 0. Now we will create our first um, sampler 2D variable which will contain the texture for the door frame and in this case I will name it main albedo since it's the main texture and we do exactly the same for the blend texture and I name it in this case blend albedo and this will be our grass texture and to improve the transition a little bit we will also um, create a transition mask um, sampler 2D variable um, to improve the blending effect. Then we go to our grass shader and we will look for these three variables right here and we will copy them and we will paste them back to our other shader. And these are varying um, variables. The first one stores the triplanar position. The second one is, um, is the sh blend sharpness and we will initialize it with um, 1. And the third one is the UV power normal and this will decide later which UV set to use for our triplanar texture. And then we will copy the vertex and the triplanar texture function from the grass shader and paste it back to our other shader. And what's happening here is Firstly, we remove the UV offset variable in line 29 and we will change the UV scale variable to our triplanar scale variable. In the vertex function, we need to recalculate the tangent and the binormal because normally they drive along with the UV but since we are now using world coordinates, we have to recalculate them. We also um, calculate the variable for the power normal and for the triplanar position. In the triplanar texture function, we have three parameters and what we basically do here is we sample a texture from the front, the side and the top and depending on the weights, we will have a triplanar texture in the end. Now we will create our void fragment function and in there we will create our first variable. It's a vector free and I name it P and this will be our camera matrix multiplied with a vector 4 which will contain our vertices and uh, 1. And from this we need the x, y and z components. Um, and with this, we can now calculate the distance. Therefore, we create a new variable from type float. And our distance is the dot product between the, the created p variable and our n. And n was the normal vector of the xc um, plane. And then we take this distance and we will clamp it between the blend offset and the blend um, size. Then we will create a vector 3 for our main color and there we will sample our main texture in the UV 
and we can do the same for our blend texture and if we do this like this we have our blend texture dependent on the UV of the object but in our case we want to use the triplanar space so we use our triplanar texture function and sample our texture in there and use the UV power normal for the third, second parameter and the triplanar pos for the third parameter. Now we can create our albedo output and there we can mix our uh, blend color with our main color and the mix value will be our distance. And now under the shader parameters I assign uh, the concrete texture to the main albedo and the grass texture to the blend albedo. And then I play a bit with the blend offset and the blend size to get a nice looking result and as you can see we have now the possibility to blend our mesh with the ground and at last I want to create the blending effect therefore I sample the um, our transition mask texture which we created above and there from this we take the red value and then we create a new variable named blend and there we use a function named overlay and we will use our distance and blend mask for this and we will change in the albedo output the mix value with the blend and then i just copy in the overlay function which will create the blending between the main texture and the blend texture and if we, for instance, use a noise texture as a transition mask, you can see, um, depending on the parameters, um, the different results you can achieve with it. And now I added a little low poly stone and we can do exactly the same. We will copy our code and paste it in there. And the only thing we have to do is to set the parameters correct for our mesh. For Godot 4, we use basically the same workflow. As you can see in the shader parameters, I added some other texture. And as you can see here, I also sample those textures and put those textures in the corresponding outputs. So for the normals, I put it in the normal map output and so on. And what is also important is that you have to be careful with your lighting, lightning if you don't want to break the illusion. If I, for instance, set up a little point light here and if I move it, for instance, up a little bit above the um, stone, you can see that sometimes um, there is still a somewhat hard edge appearing and yeah, therefore you have to be, like in this, um, like you can see right now, you have to be very careful with your um, lighting, lightning setup. And maybe you should also be a bit careful about um, ambient occlusion because ambient occlusion um, does darken the edges and therefore you should um, be a bit careful with your setup in order to keep the illusion since it's not um, perfect at the moment. So, but that is everything for this video. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.